Here is a reaction timer again. Notice how it decides and displays the winner itself. We will build on the game we made in the previous video. In this tutorial, you will learn how to construct, manipulate, and analyze an array to declare a winner. We'll be building off the previous reaction timer, so let's open it up. Currently, we have to look at all the scores and decide for ourselves who won. We want the game to decide the winner and display the identity of the winner on the screen. If the X button player on GamePad 1 has the lowest non-negative reaction time, then we should display GamePad 1X on the screen. Let's focus on GamePad 1 and scale up to the full 16-player version from there. By the way, that's always a good idea with game programming. Build something basic first and get it working well, then add on more advanced stuff later. Let's add some variables to our game. Go up to the top of the program. All right, well, let's go ahead and create an array of four integers and call it scores. Here, index 0 in the array will hold the reaction time for gamepad 1 button A, index 1 will hold the reaction time for button B, index 2 button X, and the last index, index 3, button Y. Remember that an array with four indices is numbered starting with 0. The next thing we need to do is set up a corresponding array to represent the names of each of the players. For now, we'll keep it general. So instead of Joe, Susie, and Bob, we'll call it GamePad 1A, GamePad 1B, etc. Note how we can construct an array and initialize at the same time using this shortcut syntax. Now let's create a string variable to hold the name of the winner and initialize it to nothing. String winner name is equal to nothing. Hmm. Note here that nothing is not the same thing as null. Winner name is uh, a reference to an actual string object. That string object just doesn't hold any text in it right now. Whereas with null, there would not be a string object at all. All right, let's also create a special position to display the winner. Vector 2, winner position is equal to new vector 2, and we'll put it at 300, comma, 400. Pause the video and add this code. Now that we have the scores represented in an array instead of separate variables, we can leverage the array indexing to initialize the scores more efficiently. Let's use a for loop to set the scores to zero when the start button is pressed. We can replace the four lines of code here with a for loop control structure. int i equals zero i less than 4, i plus plus. Now note, if you're already dealing with multiple controllers, instead of 4, you might set yours to 16 for 4 controllers. In addition, your scores array would have also been initialized to hold 16 
different scores. Here, in this video, we're only dealing with four. We'll also set winner name equal to nothing again in case this was not the first time the game was started. Pause the video and add this code. Great. Well, now we need to edit the score updating to reflect the array structure. So here we have a score equals timer. Instead, we'll have score spot zero is equal to timer. And we'll change the rest of these as well to score spot one, two, and three. Okay, so let's go ahead and change the the ends of the conditions as well from a score one to scores spot zero and do the same thing for b, x, and y. Score spot one, two, and three. There we go. Pause the video and add this code. If we just made those changes, we won't need the scores from before, so we can go ahead and uh, delete these. Great. So go ahead and do this for any other buttons and controllers you might be using. Now we need to write an algorithm to check for the winner. The whole algorithm will be triggered by the timer hitting 120, the end of the game. Let's go down to the update method. And after all the gamepad queries, type if timer is equal to 120. Great. Well, at this point, we need to, we need to traverse the scores array find the minimum positive score and record the index to match it up with a name in the names array. You see the indices in the scores array and the names array should be parallel and match. Let's create a variable to hold the winning score and set it to 120. Great. This winning value will be compared to the player scores in a set at 120 because we can be guaranteed that someone will have a score less than 120 since the timer only goes to 120. If we were to set it to something like 50, we might not be so sure that someone will have a score lower than that and therefore our program wouldn't accurately find the lowest player score. Create a variable to hold the index of the winning score. An index can also be called a subscript. We'll call it winner subscript and we'll set it to zero for now. Now let's iterate through the array using a for loop and if a score is above zero and if the score is less than the winning value, we'll record it as the new winning value and record its index. So for i is equal to zero, i less than four in this case, because I'm only dealing with gamepad one, i plus plus, if scores spot i is positive, greater than zero, and if scores spot i is less than winning value, winning value 
will be set to scores but I so the current score we're looking at and winner subscript will be set equal to I recording the index where we found the winner let's close up the for loop and there we go note that this if statement right here this nested if structure could also be written as a compound condition well let's not forget yep there we go this would be a great time to pause and type up that code now what happens if the players refuse to press a button I know that's weird and unlikely but as programmers we have to account for all possibilities we need to be able to display no winner as well so after all of that actually while we're within the timer equaling 120 if the winning value is not equal to 120 then we'll go ahead and set the winner name equal to names spot winner subscript that means we have a winner and we have the winner's name great on the flip side else that means that winning value is 120 meaning that we didn't find a winner we need to display no winner all right pause the video and add this code the last thing we need to do is display the winner in the draw method let's go down to the draw method and right at the end add a sprite batch statement sprite batch dot draw string and we'll use the font and we'll display the winner name the winner position and color dot white and there we go alright well one last thing to do we need to change a score 1 to score spot 0 and we need to do the same thing for the B X and Y scores because now we have the array to hold the list of scores for us pause the video and add this code All right, now run the game. In testing the game, you might have noticed that when players tie, only one player is shown as the winner. As an extension exercise, edit the code in order to show all the winners on the screen. So in these tutorials, you've learned to record the time it takes multiple players to press a button by using a counter variable to record duration. You also learned how to construct, manipulate, and analyze an array to declare a winner. Good luck, game programmer.